Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about the moment of a force, uh, about a point, and we're going to be using scalar calculations uh, to calculate this. Um, so your two options with moments, you can do scalar operations or scalar calculations, uh, or you can do vector operations, specifically the cross product. Um, and this is going to be the first two. So a scalar is just a number that is not a vector. It does not have a direction, it's just a magnitude. All right, so as a little bit of review, a, a moment is the tendency of a force to uh, rotate a body uh, and to cause some angular acceleration in that body. Um, so if I imagine I've got two blocks on, a, uh, on ice here, if I push in the middle of the box, it would just kind of slide the box along, but if I push, push on the edge of the box, uh, it's gonna wanna rotate in addition to slide. All right, so that tendency of the force to rotate the box and the second option there is the moment uh, that that force exerts. All right, so how do I do the calculations? We're gonna start in 2D. Uh, and here I've got just a lever. Uh, so I've got the lever arm and I'm pushing uh, with some force on the end there. So if I wanna calculate the moment, uh, the first thing we need to do is choose a point that we're gonna take the moment about. Uh, depending on the point, we're gonna get different moments. So I'm gonna choose the base of the lever over here. Uh, so point A is where I'm taking the moment about. Uh, and then I need the magnitude and the direction are the two things we need to find. Uh, so the magnitude of the moment is going to be the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance between the force and the point. Or m equals force times distance. All right, so <clears throat> the magnitude of the force is easy. That's usually given in your problem there. Um, and the distance, we're going to talk about what perpendicular distance means here in a second. Uh, but for now, it's the distance between my point and the force over here. So magnitude of the force, magnitude of the distance, multiply those together, and I will get the moment. Um, so <clears throat> next we have the direction, and in 2D, this is gonna be either clockwise or counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, uh, we are gonna regard as a positive moment, and clockwise, we're gonna regard that as a negative moment. And you'll often see drawn in the diagram, uh, once you have the magnitude of the moment, you can kind of label that in your diagram, and you're gonna have either uh, this in, in this case, it's going to be a uh, counterclockwise or a positive uh, moment here. All right, so the only confusing thing here is really that perpendicular distance. Um, and so this comes because there is no one point. We have the point we're taking the moment about, but with the force, we could do the, the, the tip of the vector or the tail of the vector. Um, there's a lot of points we could go to. Uh, and we only want to use that shortest distance. Um, and so the shortest distance is always going to be uh, a perpendicular distance uh, between the line of action of the force uh, and the uh, point itself. All right, so we still have this. Now if our lever moves up, so the same lever arm, we moved it up, we're still pushing straight up. I don't want this distance, that's not what I want. Uh, so if I draw in the entire line of action of the force, the shortest distance between this point and this line of action would be the line going straight out that way. So this right here is gonna be my perpendicular distance. And the second example over here, so if I've got some force, this is the center of mass of that body. I've got some force acting on the corner. Um, if I draw in the line of action, some distance that is perpendicular, 90 degrees, to that line of action is gonna be my shortest distance D. So it's always gonna be that shortest distance between uh, the line of action of the force and the point itself. And sometimes it's going to be a little difficult. Uh, this is the same example I had before. I had that line of action. Um, finding this distance here is a bit of a, uh, a big geometry problem. It's bigger than we want to do. And so when that happens, we often use what's called Varignon's theorem with these scalar moment calculations. Uh, that basically says that <clears throat> if we want to find that moment, um, rather than doing force times distance, we're going to take our force, if we break it into x and y components, I can do the force times distance, this is force uh, in the x direction times, it's going to be a vertical distance, it's perpendicular to that, and force of the y times this perpendicular distance here, which is a lot easier to find, I can easily just find those distances. If I add those two moments together, so the moment created by the x component, the moment created by the y component, 
If I add those together, I wind up with the overall moment uh, that the original force would create. So this is something applied to our 2D scalar calculations. Uh, <clears throat> and now we're going to jump into 3D. So in 3D, I still have much of the same calculations. So it's still going to be the magnitude of my moment is going to be equal to the force times this distance. <coughs> just as before, uh, but the primary change arises from the need to account for three possible axes of rotation rather than just one. Uh, so in 2D, I can only go clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, in 3D, I can go clockwise or counterclockwise around each axis. So I can go back and forth like this, I can go forward, back like this, or I can spin like so. So three different axes, each one has a clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, if you think about a plane, um, it'd be like roll, pitch, and yaw uh, are the three kind of ways you can tilt a plane as you're flying it. Um, and each one of those is going to be a separate direction. So I, can, I can't add together a moment about the x-axis and a moment about the y-axis. They're going to be separate things, just like forces in the x and forces in the y. So the magnitude of the moment is still going to be the perpendicular distance, the minimum distance, distance here. Uh, which may be very hard to find. It's going to be a 3D problem now, and finding that might be a lot of geometry. Um, and if that's the case, maybe just go to the vector uh, method for solving for this. And then once we find that magnitude, we also need to find the direction. Um, so we're going to use the right hand rule, uh, which means curl your, the fingers of your right hand up in kind of the direction it would be rotating, and your thumb, whichever direction your thumb is pointing in, that's the direction of the moment itself. So over here I've got TA, it's a tension force. And if I want to know what is the uh, tension force, what moment is it exerting about point A, which is where the two beams come together right here, I would kind of curl while it'd be rotating like this. I curl my fingers in the direction it would be rotating. Um, so TA uh, would cause a moment about the positive Y direction. Um, so this is going to exert a moment about the y-axis. It's going to be the positive y-axis. Uh, TB down here. So if I imagine what rotation, it'd be rotating about that center, uh, this piece here. So it's rotating that way. Uh, my thumb is pointing in this direction. And so that's the negative x direction. So TB would be exerting a moment, uh, this force times this distance, 8 feet, um, in the negative x direction and TC over here. So it's also rotating about the central shaft, but it's going the other direction if I wrap my fingers that way. And so this is going to be 50 pounds times 4 feet. And now my thumb was pointing in the positive x direction. So with simple problems in 3D like this, you can kind of work out which directions are which. Uh, if you imagine we've got something really complex, uh, you're kind of wrapping your fingers around in every direction. You might not be able to kind of visually see what direction that is. Um, so directions also in 3D can become very complicated uh, for scalar calculations. And that again is our right hand rule. Just again wrap your fingers in the direction that you'd be twisting and your, the thumb on your right hand is going to be pointing in the direction of that moment vector. <coughs> so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.